Hello everyone, today is Thursday, February 20th, 2020. This is the week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending today. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. I am humbled by your presence. So we're going to talk about, well, <laughs> you know, I left this. I keep forgetting that this is in here. I say current bull leg. I mean, obviously at the moment, it doesn't feel like it, but several months ago i said hey do we have a new bull egg started and, and the answer to that question is yes speaking of questions if you have any feel free to ask if you don't mind just so my add doesn't kick in keep them relative to the slides and when we get to the live charts you can ask about other things and if it's an answer that requires a lot of thoughts i will make it part of the q a so we can capture that content and put it on the back end of the website and that'll make a little more sense if you if we do end up with something that needs to go there. For you people that are already members, you fully understand what I mean. I have a members area where we have Q and A and we have a Facebook group and we do some other fun stuff. Your stock picks, if you don't mind, wait till we get to the charts. And when we do get to the live charts, the live charts that is, ask about one stock at a time. Well, I woke up this morning and say, what am I talking about? So well. Everything is so active lately. There's so much going on that let me just take my last 12 trades or so, sort of similar to what, I, what I've done recently in my stock chart show. And then I got to thinking after I put it all together, it's like, well, this is pretty much just the same thing I've been doing, which is following up on my ongoing quest. And if I succeed, I'll own the world. And even if I just do okay, I'll still be doing quite well. And that is to have the short term trading pay for the longer term trading and that's through the main methodology the core methodology meaning that we're taking a swing trade profits and then trailing a stop higher in attempted or, or longs in attempt that is to capture a longer term trend sort of free rolling or playing with the market's money so to speak and also the occasional opening gap reversal now those can be a slippery slope but when they work it's like butter. You could put a little money in your accounts and let's say you could pick up maybe 1% sometimes or even a half a percent, 100K, 500 here, 1,000 there. And provided you don't lose too much and only taking the best and leaving the rest. And I know it's, it's, it's a slippery slope. You got to be careful not to go after everything. And I know sometimes with the group, we all get excited and we all want to make as much money as possible. And maybe that's something I need to talk about at some point in time too. And it's hard, sometimes it's harder for me to just sit back and let things unfold. And by that, I mean, wait for the best. Anyway, before I digress too far, I'm sure I'll touch upon that in one second. There's a disclaimer screen, as you know, you can lose money trading or as often summing up all predictions are about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. All right, so again, my ongoing quest is to have the short-term trading pay for the longer-term trading and also for the ogres the opening gap reversals, that is, to be free money. And I wish is uh, the way I look at it there. But it's funny, when these things work and I'll hit two or three or four or five of them in a row, I'll feel like a god. And then I'll take a mediocre one or even I'll take another one that looks pretty good and it doesn't work. And then it's kind of it makes you realize that maybe they aren't always exactly the money lying in the corner type of trade that... Jimmy Rogers has spoken of. And that'll make more sense as we talk about these things. All right, so short-term attempts at longer-term trades and intraday attempts, which would mean an opening gap reversal type of play in a tip to make a little. And I didn't really have any great ones this week, but I do have two that I will show you that technically weren't opening gap reversals. So what I did was, I went in and grabbed the last 12 or so trades, not necessarily complete trades, but I will show you in this presentation the complete trade on those on those 12 trades. Just to see, or just to show you, I should say, what my what I'm attempting to do and how I'm attempting to have that short-term trading pay for longer-term trading. Now your big bucks are in your longer-term trades obviously and i have a couple of accounts that are right around the model size of 100k that i that i keep an eye on 
So I can show you these trades as I recommend them in the trading service, which I try to follow as closely as possible. And on one of those, I think there's like a $5,000 open profit, which means 5% just in that one particular trade. So that could really make a big difference in your portfolio. Now here was the original trade in Beam. And I'm not going to show you the, the Facebook post on every one or my service post on every one, but I do want to show you on a couple of these just so you'll know that these things aren't mentioned in hindsight. So Mike had pointed out in the Facebook group that this beam was setting up. And I was at the time was actually doing my analysis. And, and when I by the time I got to looking at it, it's like, oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. You know, somebody's already pointed it out. So it's like, well, you know, my work is done. Maybe I could drop the mic, relax a little bit. <laughs> no, I'd never do that. Don't worry about that. Anyway, so this is what happened. We had, we're looking at like a buy at B type of setup. One, two, three, four days. Now, the first day of trading, you can see set the high for the week, at least so far. So we also have to close above that high based on the rules. Day five. And so there was a buy on the close. Now this was the night before I left for my one day off vacation, plus the weekend, of course. But anyway, and I really didn't plan my trade and trade my plan enough. And I'm kind of looking at it in hindsight, and I'm thinking that I should have had an order in place while I was busy flying out of the country to possibly sell off half of those shares. So this is kind of like one of those in hindsight things. And my thinking was, let me just get in and then I will figure it out later. And that was a big mistake. And I want to point out these mistakes as I make them. One, so I can get better from a selfish standpoint. And two, you can see that even the Grand Pumba makes a lot of mistakes but he's trying to get better. So that was the 1M trade and an IPO. Here's one that was in the service and I'll show you the original trades I think I have that I made on this one based on the Pioneer setups. But this is a pullback. Here's the parameters down here. So a buy at this level here, a stop way down here. That seems like a long ways away, but notice that it's really not even that far below where the stock had pulled back. And then that gives us an initial profit target of 23.50. So what has happened lately? Well, not much. There's the buy 800 at 20.25, and this account's a little bit bigger than 100k. And then I also tend to round up and go with round numbers. So it was, would have been 700 shares. So I just tossed in another 800 shares. And then so far it started to work, but then not quite working out nicely just yet but what we're going to do well we're going to wait and see what happens it doesn't mean we're going to throw caution to win we do have a stop we get stopped out so be it we drop an f-bomb and we move on so another one of the trades if you look at the in fact i forgot to post them so you're probably wondering when i say these last 12 trades i did a screen capture on them in fact let me see if i could grab that for you real quick so anyway, what I did was I grabbed the last 12 trades, as I said, and so here's the CTST trade, and there was multiple fills on that. So that was going back about three trades, and this is what I did there. You know, a nice little bow tie. If you back this chart way, 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 way out, it was bottoming. The ganja stocks happened to be bottoming at the time, and a few of these were beginning to make these transitional patterns. This is a little cheap penny stock, but I figured it might be worth a shot. Good volume, and it's also low priced. So I had a buy here, and then got stopped out way down here. And you can see the thing completely rolled over, and it was a complete and utter failure. So first guru in history to show you losing trade, right? And that one hurt pretty bad for what it's worth, but still less than 2%, about a one and a half percent loss or so on the account.
here's the actual trades based on this, and you can see that's where the calculations are coming from. Now, I attempted an opening gap reversal in TEX, and there are the, the buys and the sells on that. You can see the TEX top and the bottom trades, 2,000 shares in this particular case. I put an entry way up here looking to play that opening gap reversal, and it didn't trigger until very late in the day. And you might be thinking, well, Dave, that's no longer an opening gap reversal. And I think you might be right on that. I still trade them later in the day. I do, I don't have any rhyme or reason just yet for when I take my orders off, usually around noon or so. Sometimes I'll take the orders off on these opening gap reversal trades. And you can see this wasn't triggered late in the day. I just didn't bother taking it off, um, taking all my orders off in this particular case. So I, I think you'd be much better off just looking to play that opening gap reversal early in the morning and not keeping that order open all day as a general statement. So I haven't fully fleshed that out yet. And I would be, I would like to welcome your feedback if you want to talk about that because it's no longer an opening gap reversal. The opening gap was a long time ago. But sometimes you get these late day reversals and they can be worthwhile, but is it worthwhile longer term? So what happened in this particular case, another sort of mistake, it's very hard for me to exit positions on the close because if I have multiple positions I have to get out of, in this case, I had to get out of SPXS and TECS through multiple accounts it does take a little while to get everything set up and the order entry is different with different accounts and so sometimes it takes a little while to get out of these things and i can't get out just on the close so it's probably one thing i need to work on is when i exit on the close i probably need to start within the last five minutes of trading and start getting out of trades one thing that's coming across today as i'm kind of hearing myself talk through my foggy head i picked up some crap <laughs> I guess on the airplane. Anyway, is that uh, it's like, boy, this guy doesn't know what he's doing, or he sure does have a lot of question marks. And, well, that's trading. And I think you, even if you have a very solid, solid methodology, which I do think I have, there's still going to be some questioning. And I think that's okay. How can I make it better? How could I execute better? How can I remember to plan my trade ahead of time? And then, of course, how can I? make myself follow that plan and we talk we touch upon a lot of those things all the time but the, the bottom line is you will make mistakes you will not trade perfectly and you have to learn to live with that and just work towards a constant state of improvement i think that's one of the things that's kind of interesting about trading is there's always room for improvement and you just have to look at yourself as um what is a what did Leonardo, was it Leonardo da Vinci or was it Michelangelo? I think it was Michelangelo said, and I forget the exact Latin, but it translates to I'm constantly improving or I'm always improving. And it's like Encora, Empora, something like that. I forget what it is. <laughs> Sounds like Tempora. Maybe I'm just getting hungry. Anyway, it means I'm always improving. And I think that's there's always room to improve in trading and that's probably why i get so pissed off with these scumbags out there because they don't have it all figured out but they're trying to sell you the fact that they do and believe it they don't now anyway in this particular case because i didn't get around to getting out of all my, my positions i had to exit in after hours trading on this one and i lost a few extra cents on that so that was eh, a somewhat costly mistake but not too bad where were you in china dave <laughs> Now I just went down to Belize. I uh, did not go to China. I did get a lot of text alerts. Oh, have you been to China? I'm like, no. <laughs> so on the same day, I did play the SPXS. You could argue that those two positions are highly correlated. And I think you'd be right. But sometimes what happens is the P's will make a big reversal. And sometimes what will happen is those tech stocks will make a big reversal. You're never really sure which one's going to be your bread and butter for the day, or of course, sometimes you can lose on both of them. But on these two particular trades, I think after all was said and done, I believe I scratched out 
But what happened here was it gapped lower and rallied up a little bit. It found its high in early trading. So I decided that I would enter above that high as the market continued to reverse a little bit lower. So it might've been, I don't know exactly when I put that order in, but it was well after the, uh, the high was established for the day. And it's like, well, if it comes all the way back, it makes new highs. We might have a bona fide reversal. And in hindsight, and I don't think I have any notes on this day. I wish I'd have taken better notes. So that's another thing I can improve upon, obviously. So I can go back and, and get better. And that's one thing I was thinking about today. As I'm putting this presentation together, I'm like, well, wait, I don't even have any trading journal entries on some of these days. And I'm trying to figure out what was I think, what was I thinking. But if there's no entries on the day, then I don't know what I was thinking. I can only speculate as to what I might have been thinking. So, but I think what I was thinking was if it can go back to make new highs on the day after such a fairly sizable sell-off then maybe just maybe we have a bona fide reversal and that's probably why i left that order on all day either that or i just got hungry or decided to finally move my fat ass and go to the gym and just left the orders on anyway this particular case exited market on close and i was able to get out before the market closed we're pretty much a scratch on the day now vir going back in time was one of the recent trades but i want to take a step back and show you my original trades in the vir and again i feel like i'm kind of beating myself up today because this is another mistake or stupid thing that i did that i'll show you in just one second but initially i got in pretty good on this one and ignore this first little tick way back here that's the pre-market tick that does not count but I was buying into this on a kind of a Landry Light, five SMA, brand new highs, buy a B type of setup. So the buy was there, partial profits were taken here. And then I got stopped on the remainder. And of course there was some excitement over the next few days with the coronavirus on this particular stock. And I let myself get a little too excited. But before we talk about that, I still thought this stock had a lot of potential. So we had this opening gap reversal. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna just buy a few hundred shares or 200 in this particular case, in this particular account. And I'm gonna see what happens. I'm gonna see if I can get a head start on a swing trade. And as you can see, that failed miserably. And I don't have a lot of regrets on that, but I did, you gotta be really careful if you're going to hold an intraday trade such as an opening gap reversal overnight. As a general rule, do not do that unless you're trying to get a head start on a swing trade, which I was in this particular case. A little bit more advanced technique, and it wasn't exactly a perfect setup in perfect hindsight. So anyway, you can see that I sold 200 and lost a little bit on the trade, a few points. Now, when you look at my actual trades, you'll see that I ended up selling 400. Okay, it's like, well, Dave, I thought you only sold 200. Well, the reason I ended up selling 400 was like an idiot, I did get caught up in the hype and I bought into the market when it was blowing and going. Now, that was a stupid thing to do and it's an amateur mistake, and I'm still beating myself up for doing that. And I often tell people don't confuse the issue with facts, embrace your emotions, but keep them in check, right? And so that was a mistake. And I'm just flat out showing you that I made a mistake. And that was a stupid thing to do. Q is one that was recommended recently on the trading service. So we had a buy here at 16.25, a stop down here at 12. It seems like a wide berth, but if you look at the volatility of the stock, that's really not that wide when you think about it, four and a half points. Is a lot percentage wise, but that's what it called for. And you could see we had a nice little rally, it triggers and then meanders a little bit. It comes dangerously close or really, really close to that initial profit target. And I was exiting right around then. As I often preached, don't split hairs. And then yesterday it did officially hit that initial profit target. Now I can assure you they won't always near it and then eventually hit it. 
sometimes they're near to come right back in. And that's where a little bit of discretion can really, really help you out. Now, the Sprout Social trade was one that was taken recently. And I talked about this one, I think, last week in, in, in Stock Charts show but there was initial swing trade that came out of it a few days later and then i ended up exiting out of the remainder for a slight loss on that trade but overall it made a little bit of money now the ultimate goal is not to make a little bit of money the ultimate goal is to make a little bit of money put that in your pocket okay and then hopefully and i know i said hope but hopefully have that position run for a long long time now arqt i think we may have talked about this one okay already it was for five days i'm just looking at the last 12 trades that i made so we had five days in here the buy was on the close in this case the sixth day because it closed above the highest close okay and remember we had the day one rule which means that if the high for the week was set on day one, which it was not, the high for the week was actually set on day three. So the first week of trading, the first five days, the significant high or low is set often in an IPO. And sometimes if you just wait and buy a new closing high, you will avoid a lot of losing trades because many times IPOs come public and just implode. It's what I call a die and a die. The worst thing that happens is they have a good first day and then the second day they begin to take off and that just makes everybody think this thing is going to the moon and then it begins to implode. The market will do what it has to do to frustrate the most amount of people and then the corollary to that is the market will do the most obvious thing in the most unobvious manner. So if an IPO is gonna fail, what's gonna happen first? It's gonna rally first. Not all the time, many times. So here's my buy here, 400 shares. This particular, particular case, I was thinking five points risk. As I preach, if you're gonna get into a stock, that requires a wide berth, then you just simply reduce your share size down. So stop is way down here. Initial private target, five points above where the market is. There's the actual buy. Notice that it's 10 seconds before the close because this is a buy on a close system, a market on close system. And let's see what happened. Well, not a whole lot just yet. So what are we gonna do? Should we get out? No, no, we're gonna sit tight. Remember AUI, we'll take a look at that one just one second. We'll take a look at the whole portfolio in just one second. Got to be careful not to drop an F-bomb when I do, huh? <laughs> Started out great today, didn't it? O-N-E-M, one M. If you take a look at the five-day simple moving average, I need to rename this system, the five-day SMA IPO breakout system, whatever. We're looking for five days of trading and we're thinking about getting in on that fifth day of trading. What's interesting is stock charts will give you that moving average on a fifth day. So I've been doing a little empirical research with that and it is pretty cool. Whereas a telechart only gives it to you on day six. Now, initially, if you remember, you go back when I was talking about Blue Apron, and I'm trying to think of some other turds that came out. There was one that was even bigger than that, not Uber, but um, some other IPO that came public that was really hyped and all, and everybody got all excited. And it's like, well, let me come up with a trading system or a pattern that would stop people from buying on any sooner than, let's say, day six, the first week of trading. And I discovered that the five-day moving average and telechart didn't plot until day six. Anyway, long story endless, I do find it kind of interesting that stock charts are plotted on day five, and I do find it helpful that they do that. So in this particular case, you can see five-day SMA on day five is plotted. Day two exceeds the day one high. So day one, 
is no longer the high for the week. Okay, so on day two, the high is there. So now we go off of what closing high. And I know I beat the dead horse on that, but I guarantee you tomorrow or tonight or day after, I'm going to get an email ask me about it. So day one, day two, day three, day four. And as of day four, that's our highest close, which happens to also be the day four close. So any close above that would be a go on this particular trade. And you can see that it made a new closing high the following day on the 6th. And we also had what Landry light, which is kind of a bonus, not necessary for this particular buy B pattern, but certainly a confirmation of the signal. The great thing about the five day moving average is if you're trading a higher price stock like this, remember the general rule for buy B is you want to go after mostly those that are below $20 a share and then occasionally make an exception. The system that uses the five day moving average does not have any price limitations to it but the good thing is to help make sure that the position works is by qualifying it by being the lows greater than the moving average in other words having upside daylight you're actually adding a little bit additional momentum filter on top of the buy at the signal so basically the five day sma system or whatever you want to call this thing or pattern or setup is just a buy at B that includes a five day simple moving average and all you have to do is buy when you have daylight or as we now call it Landry light and that's just simple simply the low is greater than the moving average now if you get bored look at a, a uh, a shit ton of moving averages and look at daylight, look at exponential moving averages, look at simple moving averages. I tend anything less than 10 days, 10 days or less, I should say, I, I tend to prefer a simple. Anything, anything above that, I tend to prefer an exponential. The only exception would be when looking at the overall market and the market starts getting a little iffy, I like to look at a 50 day simple and a 200 day simple simply because those two moving averages are well watched now here's some random thoughts some of which are left over from last week and this is something that i do want to continue to beat the dead horse on and that is a lot of time as a trend follower you're going to be spending that time being less wealthy in other words you're going to be giving up the open profits and if you look at some of these stocks that we got in that took forever to get to the initial profit target and some of you were getting very impatient and as was i i just don't come out and say it right <laughs> but they took forever to get to that initial profit target and in the meantime you're losing money and it's hard check your quote on sdgr okay i will the problem is i don't have enough shares going on that because we're, we're doing that in that little fun account we're going to try to run a we're going to try to run um like these gurus that tell you what they did after they did it, whether they did it or not, I don't know whether to believe them. But no one tells you ahead of time. And Stanley Kroll is reading an old book that I had laying around from Stanley Kroll on uh, commodity trading. It's kind of an interesting book. There's a few little gems in there. But anyway, he says, nobody ever says what they're going to do ahead of time. I didn't do it. So maybe we'll have some fun and do that. But the point is, as a trend follower, you're going to spend a lot of time. A lot a lot of time being less wealthy meaning that you're giving up open profits or you're waiting for the initial profit target to hit and so on and so forth yeah there you go sdgr it's up about six bucks or so yeah i only got like 100 shares of it though so what you know and so we're doing we're having we're trying to make as much money as possible do we cash out and say okay well we put 600 bucks in the account and or do we just let it ride so that's something I haven't fleshed out. I'll do it sell 50 shares. Um, good point, Chris. So maybe we need to just flip out 50 shares. Better than poking the eye, right? Anyway, so again, you're gonna be a lot of you spend a lot of time less wealthy, meaning that you're giving up those open profits again, not to beat the dead horse on that. But the the danger thing here, which you have to be really careful of, and believe me, I'd you know I'm a really emotional guy, and I am not immune. I mean, just this morning, I was up 
you know, a few thousand in some of these accounts, and then now I'm down a thousand or a few thousand or whatever. And it's like there was a big old swing, and I think I might have accidentally slipped the F bomb out. And where I'm going with this, excuse my foggy head as I try to work through these thoughts, but where I'm going with this is that from a neurology standpoint, a negative observation, which creates a negative emotion, has twice the impact on you as a positive emotion, okay? So I could be up quite a bit amount of money and I'm not really that happy about it. But if I'm down just a little bit of money, I find I get kind of cratchety. I know it's cliche, but plan your trade to trade your plan. I bought a stock as I'm trying to leave town and scramble to get out of here, buy the stock, and then shut down my office and finish up my routine or whatever, and then pack my crap and jump in the car and all these things. And I'm thinking, well, I'll make, I'll plan later. You know, I'll plan on this later. I'll figure this out later. And then felt pretty good when I saw the stock was up nicely, but then failed to lock in some partial profits, which I might regret based on the uh, SDGR trade, right? <laughs> Maybe I'll, uh, yeah, it's kind of nickel and diamond. Did it sell 50 shares? So you want to follow the process, follow the process, and follow the process. And I've been preaching that forever. And that's where like the dead money report comes in. Okay, we get into this stupid little gold stock. It does nothing for the first week, nothing for the second week, nothing for the third week, nothing for the first month, nothing for the second month, nothing for the third month. What do you do? Well, you follow the plan. If the plan says stick with it until stopped out, you stick with it until stopped out. Or the initial profit target is hit, you take those partial profits and then you follow the stock higher. So I'm not perfect, but the point I'm trying to show lately, this little kick I've been on, is that you should be able to see how the methodology works, the taking of the partial profits, the trailing of the stop, the sitting around and waiting for the position to move when it hasn't done anything wrong, meaning that it hasn't hit the stop you should be able to see all these things happen and part of the reason why i'm starting to show you all these real trades is kind of inspired in part a couple of you guys said hey can you you know start showing us some real trades and i'm like yeah absolutely so it was inspired in part by you but also inspired around the same time by dalio's principles dalio wrote a book ray dalio called principles and it's a pretty good book, and I'd recommend that you read it. And his point is that he believes in radical transparency by being open. And I've actually tried a few things, a few of those things with my wife before, and it actually worked out pretty good. Some of the thoughts and concerns or whatever that I had, and it, you know, it's a slippery slope. If you're married, you guys probably know this, but a few things that I kind of opened up on, and she's like, "Wow, I didn't realize that, or I didn't know that," and it actually worked out pretty good, but. Uh, that that one I'm working on. It'd probably be a lot easier just to show you everything I'm doing trading than to <laughs> to do those things with the wife. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop into the overall charts. And then what I want to do, let me get everything uh, shifted around. And let's see, do I need to, let me take a look at that. Uh, I guess I could flip out. Let me just flip out 50 shares on that. All right, thank you, Chris. I My plan was, since I only have 100 shares, let me just hold on, but hey, maybe you need to flip out a little bit. By the way, one thing that I really need to flesh out is that the Chris had joked, yoked, uh, yoked. <laughs> Chris had joked yesterday that somebody on YouTube had turned 14,000 into 4 million or whatever it was. And the point was that nobody does it ahead of time. So that's why I said, well, you know what? I got an IRA that has about that in it. Let's just have some fun with it. Q 
keep in mind that my risks are going to be way out of line, okay? Because 100 shares of a 30 something dollar stock in a $14,000 account is excessive risk. The only way to parlay a small account is to take excessive risk. But they, you say not to take too much risk. Well, we're just having fun with this, right? If that's all you have for your trading, then you're going to have to be a lot more prudent. But by being super risky or taking a lot, a lot of risk, you're either going to do spectacular or blow up. Now, I don't want to blow this up, but what I'm thinking is I'm going to be super aggressive on this. And then if it starts getting sizable, I'm probably going to back off on the, on the size. And there's been a few people out there that have, not to take anything away from them, that have done really well parlaying small accounts. And then they're, ever, they're never able to, to take it to the next level from that. And, you know, nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. But very hard to trade a six, much harder to trade a six-figure account than it is to trade a five-figure account. And I guess if you blow up a five-figure account, you can kind of sweep it under the rug. But if you blow up a six-figure account, the little lady might have a question or two. All right, let me... They love when you call them that, by the way. <laughs> I used to always jokingly call her that, and it was a big joke, and then did it recently. She wasn't as happy. All right, let's uh, shift gears here. What I want to do, I want to take a look at the portfolio, the open portfolio. And I also want to take a look at the overall market and take a look at some sector action. All right, let's take a look at the overall market before we pop out to the portfolio. I'm sure the media is going to have a fit today because the market went down. They're going to blame it on something. I'm trying to think of a joke, but it's not going to work. But anyway, so we're down a little bit less than 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 one percent. I have a whistling booger. I hope I hope it's not being broadcast. <laughs> It drives my wife crazy when that happens in this short trip. No, I'm not stupid enough to make a short trip joke. Anyway, we're down eh, roughly 1% in the piece. No big deal. So we're down to where we were aware when, like last Wednesday or Thursday or whatever, you know. But people do get excited, and I think everybody is is getting sucked into this market to feel like it just needs to go up. A little correction is healthy, even though it kind of is painful for me personally because I'm long out the wazoo. And I sure would like to have some more of those initial profit targets banged out, okay? But I think it would be healthy for the market to sell off a little bit. Now, we don't want it to come back below this last little breakout point in here. But as you can see, just a little bit of correction today, nothing to get too excited about just yet. NASDAQ being, in general, technology a little bit more higher in volatility. If you don't look at the percent move here, it just looks like a normal little pullback, right? Down about a percent and a half. That's sizable, but so far not enough to worry about. I wouldn't even call that a TKO yet, a trend knockout, okay? Take a look at the Rusty. Rusty continues to be a bit of a bummer. It was looking better, but you could see recently it was looking better, but you can see it really hasn't taken out this little retrace high in here. Ideally, I want to see it take out that high and then this high. And then while we're wishing, as I said in the market in a minute this morning, I'd like to see it go on to make all-time highs, okay? But it doesn't look horrible. I just would like to see it take out these recent little peaks in here. Otherwise, you have multiple peaks. and You want to call it a head and shoulders. That's fine. I wouldn't get too excited just yet. A little kind of a gatekeeper look to it. But one or two big up days would fix that. Okay, but that still has to happen. Let's take a look at bonds real quick before I forget, and then we'll take a look at some other areas. Bonds have been defined gravity as of late. If you go back in time, you could see I drew a bunch of little lines on the chart suggesting that a top was in place. Well, I don't think that top is in place anymore unless we stall short of all-time highs and roll back over. But for now, it looks like bonds are continuing to head higher in a lot of interest rate sensitive areas today, notwithstanding, such as utilities and REITs have been doing really well based on that. Let's see if we can find real estate somewhere in here. 
talk amongst yourselves. You sort them out. Here we go. So you can see the REITs have been doing pretty good as of late. It's hard for me to get too excited about real estate. They have been a few lately that have, have caught my eye. Some areas like banks not looking so hot in here. I don't know if that's related to bonds. Okay, you can see a daily bow ties have bow tied down. Let's take a look at a weekly chart. Weekly doesn't look too bad just yet. Let's go back to a daily. As you can see, daily bow tied down. If you just look at the blank chart, you can see kind of rolling over here. So banks look a little dubious, but it's not the end of the world. A lot of areas like anything technology related getting hit today, but longer term looking pretty damn good, right? In fact, software, if anything, starting to look like a TKO. And actually, if this was an individual stock, I'd actually like to see this knockout move maybe like twice that size. I know it sounds crazy, right? Let's take a look at hardware, or some people call it Apple. And the reason I say that is Apple makes up such a vast majority of uh, hardware. Now, Apple's going straight up, and somebody was asking me, you know, how come you don't play Apple? It's like, well, okay, it went straight up, but it took one year to go up 100%. Hey, that's nothing to sneeze at. Well, yeah, you know, I'd be happy if every stock I bought went up 100% in one year. But the point I'm trying to make is if you time it just right and you catch a little biotech like this, it goes up 100% in one day okay so that's why i'm not super excited about trying to trade something like an apple it trades like 50 billion zillion zillion shares daily everybody and their brother owns it if anything and i'm not going to fight the trend i'm a lover not a fighter like leo melamed once said be a lover not a fighter right when it comes to markets and trend follow just follow the trend right so I'm not gonna fight it, but let me tell you something. When Apple begins to roll over and you get a bow tie down in Apple, it's going to be worth a short. It's going to be worth maybe buying some puts because if everybody decides to run to the door at the same time, there's gonna be nobody left to buy. So I would much rather short a very efficient stock like this, even though it has traded in an inefficient manner, over the last, I guess, year or so, I would much rather short an inefficient stock like this than jump in with the rest of the sheep. But Dave, I thought you were a trend follower. I am, but I'd rather follow a trend in something that has the potential to make a, a much bigger move over a much shorter period of time. Now, when you short stocks, as a general statement, my feeling is it kind of turns everything on its head a little bit you're better off shorting a bigger cap stodgy stock, such as like a tractor supply or something like that, than you are going after an inefficient stock, such as a little biotech or something, because that's kind of dangerous. So overall, things still look pretty good. We'll see how today shakes out. We'll see how the next few days shake out. We don't know if this is beginning of correction or not. I'll let you know. But for now, I think the trend remains up. Let's take a look at portfolio real quick. BR, BR, this one's been all over the place. We entered way back here. It's all over the place. It's actually catching a little bit of a bid today. So what do we do? Well, until the stop gets hit, we don't do anything. Q we talked about, Q ran up. Came within one cent of that initial profit target. As I preach, do not split hairs when that happens. And then finally, yesterday, it actually officially hit the profit target, and we're in free rolling mode there. KOD has been a little disappointment as of late. We've got a very liberal stop in that one. Get stopped out, get stopped out. You can't look at how much money you gave up. I know, easier said than done. Okay, I dropped that bombs too. But more importantly, you need to look at how much was made. 
but I hear you. But if you are upset about the money you gave up, just send me whatever's left in your account after the trade based on those trades, and I'll be happy to uh, take that troublesome cash off your hands. So PAGs, when we're still short, a little bit of a sell-off today. So far, it looks like a major top remains in place on that one. And this is uh, kind of an anomaly because usually we short when the market's rolling over and the market goes right back up. We can stop that of shorts, start getting along. Well, this time we started getting along and then the shorts actually stayed on, which is unusual. That's, I, I don't think I ever can remember that happening. This PLMR, it's an insurance company, but boy, I tell you, it trades kind of in a, in a crazy manner. And this one we've gotten in a long time ago, I think 10 points ago or more. And then we taken partial profits off. We had a liberal stop in here just because we were in trend following mode and I forget exactly where it is. But yesterday they had earnings or something, made a nice little opening gap reversal and then came right back up. And then today, shot higher coming back in a little bit, but it was still still up two points of change, better than poking me on that one. Ping, we had a nice little move earlier today in Ping, obviously, looking pretty good. This one has hit the initial profit target, and we're in trend following mode on that one. PGNY, also in trend following mode. SPT not working out so well just yet on the pullback trade. So what do we do? Well, we just sit tight. TSCO is a short. Stop is at 100. Getting really, really close to that stop. So far, major top appears to remain in place. And then finally, AUI is the poster child for following the plan, following the system. I know people got frustrated somewhere in month one, month two, month three, month four month five or month six, okay? And then finally, of course, if you exit, that's when it hits the initial profit target. But so far, so good. These gold stocks have been doing pretty good in here. Gold to commodity, banging out new highs with a little bit of vigor. As you can see, that's GLD, okay? So that's the open portfolio. If you want a snapshot of it, which I should have grabbed before this presentation, I'll be happy to to give you that. All right, let's open it up for individual questions. And yeah, keep your stock picks coming. Okay, Donald said, would you consider a short on Tesla if it bow tied down? Absolutely. Let's take a look at that. Now, that is one of those, absolutely with caveats, okay? That is one of those Justice Potter Stewart things, meaning that I'll know it when I see it, okay, if you don't know who Potter Stewart was, he's famous for saying, I'll know it when I see it. So let's just see what happens. I don't want to confuse issue with facts, but Tesla probably got a little bit ahead of itself, okay? Tesla seems like a company that'd be full of naysayers, and those naysayers shorted it, and they just got their buttocks handed to them and got squeezed out. Problem is, I guess a new round of shorts will pile all over it. By the way, for those who weren't who aren't in the Facebook group or who are watching this and not part of the Facebook group, just for S and G's, because we started that a little fun account, I thought it'd be fun to go in and see if there were some crazy ass way out of the money options on Tesla. And again, this is outside of the core methodology, trading a little account aggressively and taking a few risk and gambles like that. But I thought it'd be kind of interesting to go in and look. And what's shocking is puts hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of points out of the money have bids. That just shows you how speculative the stock has become. So yeah, we'll have to, I'll know when I see it. You know, The only thing to think about is once you get the stock this high priced, it might not be worth, it might not be worthwhile in that you might end up shorting like, I don't know, 50 shares or something like that. I mean, if you had, what's 100 times 900, right? That's um, $90,000. So you wouldn't even be able to short, let's say a $100,000 account. You couldn't even short 100 shares because that would be $90,000. You'd have 90% of your account short Tesla. So it just might not be 
worth it at these high levels. Now I just said short apple, so let's make sure I'm not talking about both sides of my mouth. Yeah, three hundred dollars a share. It still would be a, a smaller position. So it might not even be worth it to go after those. But yeah, would I be? You know, I guess a better question would would I be bearish if Apple or Tesla formed a bow tie down? The answer is yes. Would I short them? I might consider shorting them. I might consider buying some puts, maybe into the money puts. But uh, outright positions, I'd have to think about that. I'd have to see how it all sets up. And it might not be, you might not be able to get enough shares off to make it worth your while. Long puts then on Tesla, possibly, okay? Now, you probably would have to go into the money quite a ways to make it worthwhile. Now, without going off to, on too much of a tangent, because I know we've covered this before, but deep in the money puts as a substitution for stock, I do tend to, I will short outright, but I do tend to take a look at deep in money puts as a substitution for stock. Because let's say I can put up ten thousand dollars, and I wouldn't even want to put up that much. But let's say let's just pick a little bit more feasible number. Let's say five thousand dollars on a hundred k account. I'd rather put up five thousand dollars, which is still substantial. Don't get me wrong. And short Tesla via in the money puts, than to short a hundred shares of Tesla and put up ninety thousand dollars. Okay. So you might want to consider an in the money put and then decide on how much fluff you're willing to pay. How much money do you want to pay so you're not putting up $90,000, okay, to short it? So think think of it that way. But we'll see. Yeah, Donald, uh, possibly in the money puts. All right, Chris wants to talk about ATRC. Yeah, this looks really good. Um, First thing's jumping out of me, a little bit on the thin side, so we'd have to check the spread. The, the trend higher looks pretty good. It's um, David Keller's talked about somebody, and I forget his, his name. I need to ask him who it was, but he had a mentor once that said, I like trends that I don't need my eyeglasses to see. Well, that statement makes a lot of sense to me now, now that I keep these magnetic reading glasses hung around my head and 90% of the time they're on my eyes. <laughs> but I think I could take them off. Yep, I can still see it when I take them off. <laughs> Down in um, Belize, I bought a who rag, the people who ride around in the golf carts. You know, it's funny that the locals, they'll like cut, they'll take a an angle grinder and they'll cut some cement or stone or whatever, and they'll have no face protection whatsoever, no eye protection. It's, it's a very hard thing to watch. But when they drive down the street so they don't get dusty, they'll put a hoo rag on. <laughs> so anyway, I, I have a picture of me on Facebook with my hoo rag on, trying to look like a badass. And then it's like, hey, I look like a badass, except for those magnetic re reading glasses hanging around my neck. Chris, I like this one. The and I'm going to tell you why I like it, and I'll tell you what I would wait for. So notice that it's fairly persistent and it's moved higher, and then notice that it accelerated higher, and obviously it's begun to pull back. I'd like to see a little bit deeper pullback, okay? Also, obviously, I want to check the spreads to see what the spreads are looking like, okay? But yeah, as a general statement, I mean, that's that's close to a high five if it was pulled back a little bit deeper. So make sure you put that on your watch list. Okay. All right. T D O C T D O C. Keep them coming. Please keep them coming. Yeah, that's another one. Looks okay. Let's back it out a little bit. It may be priced for perfection. That ARTC was at high levels too. Don't get me wrong. But this thing, this thing is up pretty high at nosebleed levels. And here's the deal. Let's go back to like the S&P 500. Let's just put up the spiders real quick. So the spiders themselves are kind of at nosebleed levels. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to match the pattern to the market. So let's say back in December, the market begins to, to turn back up. I'm more excited about stocks that are turning back up with the overall market than stocks that are in extended trends already. 
back in November, if you go back and look at the service, what did we short? We shorted some of these stocks at high levels that were just beginning to roll over because the overall market was going to roll over. So the point I'm trying to make now is we might only be left with those stocks that are at a bit of nosebleed levels, okay? Ideally, though, I like to find something in a little bit newer trim. Now, one thing that kind of stands out to me a little bit is that a lot of its, its move was made in one day, okay? And let's just, uh, let's measure that for S and Gs. So it went up. 12% in one day, and then let's let's take a Janet Jackson. What have you done for me lately? And then it went up another 22%, okay? But that 22% took a long, long time. So it's still trending nicely, don't get me wrong, but it kind of started with a bang, and then it, it hasn't really accelerated, except for maybe two days ago, beginning to accelerate high. So it looks okay. I guess if you look at it like this and then like this, you could say, well, it's accelerating, Dave. And I know I'm just kind of picking it apart. But maybe on a deep pullback or a TKO type of move. So it would have to correct quite a bit. So that's that's pretty good. Work is slack, which has been bottoming nicely in here. This was one back here that was on the Landry list, and I know some of you guys front ran it. Shame. <laughs> I guess if you front ran it, then you didn't honor your stop, so you're, I guess you're doing okay. But you can see that it didn't really trigger, and then it imploded. Let's take a look at the bow ties there real quick. So yeah, we did have a bow tie not that long ago, and that's why I had it as a possible watch in the Landry list. It was, oops because it was a bow tie, getting an alert, sorry. But now it went on, it went down the bottom out, it's going to take off a little bit. So I have this on my, my momentum list, easy for me to say. I think if it pulls back a little deeper, a little further, it might be worth a shot. But Dave, I thought with transitional patterns, they don't really have to pull back much. Well, they don't, but in this particular case, because it's had a pretty good run from lows, I'd actually like to see it correct a little bit. Sometimes you'll get the bow tie, like right here, you can see when I first caught my eye, it really hadn't corrected much, but I liked it because it was just bottoming out. But now it's had a, had a big run higher, but absolutely, if that thing pulls back a little bit, it might actually be worth a shot. <laughs> okay, unless I get sick with a close above Dave Light. Let's see. Okay. Um, that actually looks more like a short to me. I wouldn't short it because it's kind of a wild and crazy stock, HV of 90. Still a relatively new issue here. Okay. Um, if anything, you had you had a sharp thrust lower, followed by a retrace. So I would not short it, but to me, it doesn't look fantastic anymore. So I would stay away from that particular stock for now, unless it went on to make new highs and then pull back again. So yeah, Craig, I would pass on that. Good to see you. So Witch's Hat. Yeah, it's sort of, uh, it's kind of hard for me to describe what I would call it. Um, I guess it's kind of a Witch's Hat. Let's see, let's back it out a little bit. It just looks toppy. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it other than that. Um, it, it has that big picture retrace look to it. If you picked it apart, you could say, well, that would be a a shoulder. That would be the head. And then when you have a right shoulder higher than the left, that's a bearish pattern. And I think it gives false hope. I haven't really figured out exactly why. I guess it gets. I guess people think that, okay, if it starts going higher than the left shoulder, it's going to go to brand new high, so I better get in. And when that fails to materialize, when it's all short of the prior high, kind of in that gatekeeper fashion, and gatekeeper is sort of a reverse check mark where you have a sell-off from highs, and then it retraces up like this, stalls out, and then you get the next leg lower. It's the closest thing to a reversal, other than an opening gap reversal, that I'll trade. Let's take a look at like a, a two-day chart. See, on a two-day chart, maybe even a three-day chart. Yeah, a three-day chart. 
it kind of cleans up a little bit. So you get the thrust down and then you got this little big retrace here. And I'm just kind of looking at this on the fly, but it does kind of give you a little perspective because what I'd say earlier about, looks like the big move was made here, 31% in one day. And then let's see what it did, what it's done since. 31% in one day, and then it's a pretty good run though. Yeah, another 69%. So yeah, still had a pretty good run after that. So I wouldn't pick that apart too much that it started with a bang, because you did have some acceleration in here. But the point I'm trying to make, believe it or not, I have one with this three-day chart, is that it does have a little bit of a retrace look to it, okay? That that shows up a little bit more in a longer term chart. You went long, okay, two days ago. Why would you go long, Chris? I don't I don't see it, okay? Two days ago. Let's clean this chart up a little bit and back it out. Let's pick that out, pick that apart. So let's see, two days ago, one, two. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just not seeing it. I mean, it made such a deep retracement, but hopefully it'll work out for you. It's almost in a neo pattern. What a neo pattern would that be? O'Neill had a book on shorting once, and then I used to have that somewhere. He actually talked about shorting many years ago, and then I guess that became like a rare book because he seemed to become bullish all the time. Short ARMK. Let's take a look at that. Oh, you know what else we could do? Here's the other thing, too. Just for S&Gs, let's put the bow ties in, okay? So not quite a crossover, but when you're when your bow ties are really starting to, let's see what you had, come together and look like they're going to implode, that's when you, you probably don't want to go long stocks that look like that, okay? All right, AR, ARMK. Okay. Yeah, now, now here's an interesting stock, okay? So I want to be long biotech. I want to be long something exciting, okay? I want to be short something that's a little bit more boring, but has plenty, plenty of volume, okay? And ideally might be priced for perfection. So it's a restaurant. They're not splitting the atom. Aramark. Has anyone ever <clears throat> has anyone ever eating at a eaten at an Aramark? But it's kind of cool because it broke out to brand new highs and looked pretty good back here. But then it imploded and then it took out this base. And now it's pulled back a little bit. So yeah, I think that looks like a pretty darn good looking short. High five as far as that's concerned. I don't see any reason to go out and short anything just yet, though. Okay. But Let's take a look at a bow tie. You got a bow tie off of all time highs. So I would say, yeah, absolutely. But I'm, again, I'm not really too excited about shorting anything at this juncture. But yeah, if you wanted to fire one off just to remember what they look like, they're concession folks. So they sell concession stuff. All right, concession folks. Like at stadiums. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I know what concessions are. But yeah, I got you. Cups. Okay. Any any additional ones you guys want to look at? You got me here. Wow, look at that. <laughs> now see, I went into this thing with no plan, and I took off 50 shares just to put some money in, in the account. So this is going to be, again, that account, it's just going to be, be traded a little bit differently. Now, you can't get a little bit pregnant, so I have to be really careful. <laughs> Yeah, see, you know, I uh, or you can argue either way on that. You know, you could say that, well, you um, you got caught up in the moment. So I went in without a plan just because it's like, well, it's only 100 shares. Who cares, right? Well, you know, I guess you can't get a little bit pregnant. But we're trying to make as much money as quickly as possible. But we also don't want to lose or give up too much over the profits, too. So. But yeah, that's uh, that looks pretty interesting so far. <laughs> nah, Chris, that's no big deal. All right, anything else? Going once, going twice. 
While we're in impasse, I want to thank everybody for coming. Appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. Anything unanswered? www.davelander.com slash contact. We don't talk to you now and then. Everybody have a fantastic weekend. Thank you guys and girls for attending today. Thank you so much.